Today on Made to Hack, I blitz you with LED lighting information. Now, of course, when you switch over to LED lighting in the workshop, you don't have to go to LED strips. You could use just your regular old LED light bulbs, replacement bulbs that are on the market. And these work well directly with mains electricity. You could just pop these in. You don't have to get like any um, power transformers or power supply units. Here's another example of an LED. Uh, this is a floodlight that I used outside. And this is, again, mains rated. You just plug it in directly into your mains power. Uh, it's got everything included. However, what I'm doing is I'm going in with LED strips. Um, these are, in, in my opinion, they're more versatile insofar as you can kind of put them exactly where you want the light to be without necessarily having to have a socket. I like the flexibility. I like the fact that I could cut them to any length that I want. Um, and I like that they're easy to install. Of course, uh, I do have to use a power supply unit with this because these are not mains rated. If you look at an LED strip, it will just have the uh, LED chips on and uh, a resistor to limit the current. These come in two flavors. So that's the first thing you have to look at LED strips is find out the voltage that it needs and what kind of power it draws so you know which power supply to get. The two most common voltages for LED strips that I've seen are either 12 volt, like this example here, or 24 volt. The reason is very simple. Uh, white LEDs have a forward voltage of anywhere from three to three and a half volts. So if you put three of them in series, that makes anywhere from nine to about 10 and a half volts, and then you have the resistor. So 12 volts would drive three in a row. If we take a look here closer, closer look here, you can see three LED chips that are in series with the resistor and everywhere that you see this little line is where they could be cut into individual pieces. So you could have a piece of strip as small as just three chip diodes that would run off 12 volts. Power supplies for LEDs come in various uh, sizes and assemblies. I've got a few different ones here, uh, anywhere from uh, like a 42 watt supply, an 80 watt supply, 60 watt supply. Now that I know that I'm going to be needing a minimum of 36 watt power supply to be able to run these two meters worth of strip, the smallest power supply that I would take would be this one, the one that's rated for 42 watts. You should always oversize your power supply unit. It's not a problem going with a 60 watt power supply, 80 watt power supply. Those are all better, fine because they will get you your 36 watts without any problem. The second thing to take into consideration when upgrading to LED lighting for the workshop or for anywhere for that matter is the color temperature of the light. The fluorescent up above that we looked at is a cool white light. So that's your typical very bluish white light sort of around the 6500 Kelvin color temperature. Sunlight color is somewhere about the 5000 Kel uh, Kelvin 5500 Kelvin range. So that's your typical sunlight daylight. In the shop, I like to use about 4,000 to 5,000 Kelvin. It's not super cool white and it's not warm. It's just, it's sort of a comfortable white that's daylight. So I prefer this color uh, over any of the other ones. So that's the, the, the one thing that you want. Uh, look for, I recommend day white or four to 5,000 Kelvin for the optimal color temperature in my mind. If you're working in the shop, if you're painting something, you do want something that has a, a neutral uh, light so you kind of get the realistic colors. The final parameter you want to look into for uh, LED lighting is the CRI, the Color Rendering Index. Now what this stands for is essentially the light's ability to, um, to properly uh, show you the colors of an object. So if you imagine typical sodium uh, vapor uh, street lamps, those dim, or not dim, but they're like this off yellow color that you'll see mainly in street lighting. They're very efficient, but they have a terrible color rendering index. So if you look at like cars that are parked at night, you wouldn't really tell what's their real color. I recommend trying to get uh, LEDs with at least an 80 color rendering index. It'll make sure that the colors you look at are um, uh, properly the, the the colors that are really there so imagine daylight sun as a 100 color rendering index that's why many people that are in design will maybe take something outside at 
uh, in midday sun uh, just to make sure that the color they're looking at is the real color if you will then you want to try to get at least 80 with LEDs and in the shop they'll work great now if you are a videographer doing uh, videos in your shop maybe something uh, in the 90s uh, for CRI might be a better idea um, again it might help you uh, color grade your video later on but for most applications I recommend 80 CRI uh, and above Hey, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure to turn on notifications to receive updates whenever I post a new video. If you like what you saw, hit that like button as well.